All right, I said I would get to device naming, and I'm running out of time, but really quickly, um, <laughs> we, we could spend a lot of time on this. Uh, you saw C0, D0. Um, you will also see T0. Basically, what I've spelled out here is the C is generally the controller number that the device is attached to. The T is the target number that's traditionally SCSI related, so you won't see that on machines that use an IDE interface, which is typically your, your, your Intel type machines. Uh, your disk number, and then your partition number in the case of Intel based machines. They have four possible partitions. So what I've done is drew a little picture, because the pictures are a lot easier to understand. Here's an example disk. I have four partitions. I could have Windows in one, Solaris in another, Ubuntu in a third, and maybe my fourth is for shared data. So just be aware of that. Um, and then I want to, and how do you identify a device? You can use the format command. And I already ran that. And we saw my device was C0, C0, D0. I just want to quickly wrap up with file systems you should be aware of. The Unix file system, or UFS, is the default file system for Solaris 10. Uh, ZFS was a new file system introduced with Solaris 10. My next talk after lunch, I will introduce ZFS if you're interested in it. Uh, the talk about what's uh, compelling, or I forget the title, but the problem Solaris solves, ZFS is a piece of that. And then the network file system, or NFS. So quickly, um, here, so Solaris, one thing about ZFS is it, it was introduced in update six. I told you there's been eight updates already. So this was uh, almost a, two years ago, a year and a half ago. It can now be the root file system meaning you can actually boot off of ZFS. The big benefit to that is the live upgrade. So that now when you create a snapshot, it's instantaneous, and that upgrade will, occur, uh, will be much more quick than using UFS. I put a link there to our URL that tells you how to migrate a system that is currently using UFS as your root file system to ZFS. And then finally, I want to talk quickly about NFS, and I think it's best with a demo. So let's close with that. This is kind of a cool feature. I have an NFS server. That's an SMS service running on Open Solaris. I can simply CT, CD to the net directory and type the host name. Now what I'm doing is I'm browsing the, hopefully I did that right. Oh well, figures my last demo is going to kook out at me, but that could be a, a VirtualBox glitch. Or I, I don't know what's going exactly with the network, but anyhow, traditionally you just—it's—it's it's really cool. It auto mounts. You just—you just go into the net directory, and I didn't talk about that with directories. There we go. It seems to have woken up. Okay, and that—that that listing there is actually the listing from my Open Solaris machine, and I can work with those files just as if they were local to my machine obviously dependent on the network connection being good, as we just saw, but that's one of the keys of NFS, is it treats files as if they're local to the machine. And so with that, I have eaten into two minutes of your lunch time. I'm really sorry. I will take questions if you have them. Uh, please come back after lunch. I have another presentation uh, on Solaris. Yeah, so that's, you know, it does. It does, it just takes a lot longer, because if you're familiar with ZFS, we have the snapshotting capabilities, and so we can create that instantaneous snapshot of the boot environment, and then live upgrade to that, where with UFS, all those files need to be physically copied to another location, so it takes a lot longer.